Hello, welcome back to Guided Reading with Miss Oliver. I'm super excited to have you here with me today, and I can't wait to get started on our new and exciting lesson. Before we do, let's make sure we have a few things in place. The first thing we're going to do is take out the two worksheets that we're going to work with for this lesson. The first one is titled Homophone, Identifying Words. You should see a worksheet with eight pictures on it. Our next worksheet has no title, but it's also it also has eight pictures on it, four on one side, four on the other side. You can look at the screen to match the worksheets in front of you to the worksheets on the screen. Then we're going to take out our book, My Clothes Are Too Small. You should see a little boy trying on a small shirt on the cover. We're going to need a pencil to write with. And most importantly, we want to make sure we're in a quiet and calm space so we can focus and grow our brains. If you need to pause the video right here to get all your things together, please do so. If not, we can move on. So what exactly are we going to do in this video? The first thing we're going to do is go over our new 10 sight words for the week. Then we're going to jump into our lesson on homophones. And after that, we're going to read our book, My Clothes Are Too Small. Jumping right into that sight word review. Repeating after Miss Oliver. Dog. City. Girl. Want. Are. Top. I. Got, she, wants. One more time from the top. Girl, I mean, I'm sorry, dog, city, girl, wants, are, top, I, got, she, wants. Now, you're going to pause the video right here to go through those 10 sight words on your own. Give it a try. Pause. We're bringing it back in five, four, three, two, and one. How did you do? Awesome job. Remember, scholars, we're going to work with these same 10 sight words the whole week, so you're going to get super familiar with these. So we're moving on to our new lesson. Today, we're going to learn about homophones. Hmm, what exactly is a homophone? Oh my gosh. A homophone is a word that sounds the same as another word, but it has a different meaning and a different spelling. Let me read that again for you. A homophone is a word that sounds the same as another word, but has a different meaning and a different spelling. For example, if we look at the two pictures on our screen, we have I, E-I-Y as an eyeball, and we have I, just plain I, as an eye. They sound the same, but they mean two different things, and they're spelled differently. Let's do that again. So we have I, E, I, Y as an eyeball. And we also have I, I as an I, me. Those words sound the same, but they're two different words. These words can be super tricky. Let's look at another example. So we know that homophones sound the same, but they have different meanings and different spellings. Let's check out our other one. So we have a sentence. The sentence says, a rose is a beautiful flower. Ooh, F-L-O-W-E-R, flower. And then our second sentence says, I use flour to bake a cake. F-L-O-U-R. So we have one flower that means like a plant in a garden. And we have another one flower that means an ingredient in a cake. <sighs> you hear how they sound the same? but they have two different meanings and they're spelled differently. Homophones can be really, really tricky, but after our lesson, I'm sure they won't trick you anymore. Let's look at another example. So we have pair. I have a pair of brown boots. And our second sentence says, Kim had a green pair with her lunch. Whew. Pair, P-A-I-R, meaning two, and then we have pear, P-E-A-R, meaning a delicious fruit. They sound the same, but they mean two different things, and they're not spelled the same. So we have pear, P-A-I-R, meaning two, then we have pear again, P-E-A-R, meaning a fruit. Mm, sound the same, but they mean two different things. 
let's look at another one because we want to make sure we have this locked in our brains so when we do our work and our independent practice time, you got it. So remember, homophones sound the same, but they mean two different things and they're spelled differently. Now, I want you to try to spot the homophones. Tell me which word in the sentence is the homophone. I can write my name. I'll read that sentence one more time. I can write my name. That's our first sentence. Our second sentence says, that is correct. You are right. Which words in these two sentences sound the same, but they're spelled differently and they have different meanings? I'll give you a chance to think, 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 think about your answer. So what you got? Which two words in these sentence, sentence one and sentence two, are the homophones? That's right. The word right. We have I can write my name. And then we have, that is correct, you are right. We hear how they sound the same, but they're spelled differently. And they mean two different things. One of these words means to draw something, to write something with a pencil. And the other means that you got something right. You're correct. Right, W-R-I-T-E, and right, the R-I-G-H-T. Two different words, but they sound the same. That's tricky. But I think you can get another one. Let's see. Our first sentence said, Dad walked his son to, I'm sorry, Dad walked to the park with his son. And our second sentence says, The sun shined brightly. I'll give you a chance to think, 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 but I know you got it because this is easy peasy. Dad walked to the park with his son. The sun shined brightly. Which two words in the sentence sound the same? but they mean two different things. That's right, the word son. We have son, S-O-N, meaning a little boy and his father. And then we have son, S-U-N, meaning the bright sun in the sky. They sound the same, but they mean two different things and they're spelled, they're spelled differently. Mm. I think it's time for our independent practice time. So let's go ahead and take out those two worksheets and a pencil to write with. I'll give you five seconds to do so. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. So our first worksheet, that's titled Homophone Identifying Words. You're going to go ahead and put your name at the top and we can jump right in and get started. So Mrs. Oliver is going to do the first one for us. We have B and B. Oh, I got to read the directions first. I'm sorry. The direction says, circle the correct word that goes with the picture. Our first one is B and B. Both of these words sound the same, but they mean two different things. I have B, B, E, and B, B, E, E. Hmm. Which one of these words, which one of these homophones goes with that picture? Hmm. I know B, E. It's like a sight word, like I be, oh, I may be anything I want to be. And then I know the word B-E-E, -E. it's like bumblebee. And that's a picture of a bumblebee. So I know the word B-E-E -E goes with that picture. Hmm, that's tricky. So let's try the next one. So the picture is a lady in the supermarket buying some fruit. I'm going to read my words, buy, B-U-Y, and buy, B-Y-E. Hmm. I know this first buy, B-U-Y, means to buy something. I give you money and you give me something back. And then the second buy, B-Y-E, means to wave goodbye, like you're saying bye. If I look at the picture again, I see the lady in the store buying something. So this picture goes with this word. So I would circle that word and I'll move on to the next one. So that's what you're going to do for the rest of the worksheet. Once you complete that one, you'll go to the next one. The directions for this worksheet says, match the homophones. Draw a line between the words that sound the same. I'll do the first one. Buy. B-U-Y. We just talked about that one on the last worksheet. Buy. 
Then I'm going to look on this side and I'm going to find the word that sounds the same as buy. I have break, flower, here, and buy. I think I found it. Buy, B-U-Y, and buy, B-Y-E. These two go together, so I'll draw my line from here to there. I'll do the same thing with the other ones. You have about eight minutes to work on this worksheet, so go ahead and pause your video and get started. We're bringing it back in five, four, three, two, and one. We're gonna go ahead and push our two worksheets to the side along with our pencil, and we're gonna take out our book. My clothes are too small. While you're getting out your book, this is always gonna do the same thing. Got my book out. Here we go, here we go. So the title of our book is My Clothes Are Too Small. The author of this book is Anthony Coran, and the illustrator is Jane McDonald. Mm. We know that the author writes the words and the illustrator draws the picture. So before we read our book, we always, always, always try to predict or guess what this book is going to be about by the cover and reading the title. So let's take 30 silent seconds to look at the cover of our book, read our title, and try to predict or guess what we think this story is going to be about. So go ahead and pause your video so you can predict. We're bringing it back in five, four, three, two, and one. Now since you had a chance to think about your answer, what do you predict or guess this story is going to be about by looking at the cover of the book and reading the title? Mm -hmm. That's an excellent guess. You said you think this book is going to be about a little boy that outgrew his clothes. His clothes are too small. That was an amazing guess. Kiss your brain and give yourself a pat on the back. Awesome job for you. So before we read our story, we also want to go over some words to know before we read. So these words are going to be found in our book. Let's go over them. Our first word is brother, grown, small, summer, sweatshirt, two. One more time from the top. Brother, grown, small, summer, sweatshirt, two. So these are words to know before reading. These words are going to be found in our book, My Clothes. Oops, excuse me. My Clothes Are Too Small. So now since we made our predictions on what we think the book is going to be about, we went over our words to know. Now this is the chance you're going to have to read the book on your own. How cool is that? We're going to end our video, but you're going to read the book on your own. And when we come back in our next video, we're going to read it together. And we're going to answer some questions about what we just read. How cool is that? Mm. So we're going to end our video and I'll see you next time. Bye. Have a great day.